from Sir Bad Lanes and Kingman here for the title matches of today's JVC event. An exciting bracket match play round. Uh, and four talented finalists remaining. Cesar Padilla looking for his sixth career JVT title. He is fortunate to be here. Won in a semi-final roll-off 9-8 over Ben Lafoon to get here. Going up against first-time finalist Amar Bryant. Looking to break through for an initial JVT title there. To the right is the handicap division. That's top seed Connor Pendergrass. He is looking to win his first career title against another first timer, uh, Miguel Espinosa. So one of the two of them is going to win career title number one. And to the right of all of them, it's the All Vegas U17 battle between Darius Allo and Tyler Castanova. Let's go. Tyler finished third in the main tournament, losing in the last round to Bryant. Oh, bad shot there from Padilla in the fourth. Padilla looked like that match was over and uh, came back. Includes seven count on the fill ball and then a uh, eight count in the roll off. The handicap difference over here is seven. Connor has to beat Miguel by seven to tie, eight to win. Much better day for Padilla today than yesterday. Struggled on the short, much longer pattern. That's kind of Padilla's bread and butter. He led the tournament at plus 186 for five and won all his matches, obviously, to get here. But Amar was right behind the number two seed at plus 147. So it's one versus two in scratch. One versus 14 in handicap. Miguel is the last bowler in, snapped off Gage Baker by two pins and has bowled great in match play to get here. First strike of the title match from Amar. A much improved bowler. He tried the scratch division about a year and a half ago. It didn't go so well. Went back, retooled his game, and has come out great. Made the cut at Desert Open and in the title match here. Connor doesn't have a title, but you see him wearing that fancy red I Am Bowling shirt, meaning he shot 300 last year. It was an exciting one. It let it roll. The whole place went nuts when he shot that perfecto in the invitation last season. And wow, somehow converts the 3-6-9-10 in most unusual fashion. I would have I wish you did that in Tucson so I could watch that replay. I'm not quite sure how those pins fell there. The three leaned over to the right, the six I don't know what just happened there. That was that was plum bizarre what that was. Thanks so much to Debbie and the whole team here at Servat for having us. Great hosts of our tour. Dual conference event, so all these guys are making the Mojave and Arizona invitationals. Let's see what Amar can do with a 36910. Well, he'll go back up at it. Oh, oh my. Those were, the, <laughs> those were the two most bizarre 3610 results back to back I've ever seen. I still don't know how Connor made his, and I have no idea how Amar got one out of that. Where did that three pin go? What a bizarre set of pin action that was right there. You know how Pendergrass calmly makes the spare. He is slinging pins all over. Espinosa, the lone remaining. Oh, you got another trick win. The lone remaining member of the Cactus Mafia. Quite a few of them made match play, but he is the last cacti standing. Cameron Sager finished third as he was the other cacti top four. It's rare to have an Arizona event without a cactus finalist. This is close. Oh, he gets the back two. That would have been a uh, bonus shot during our raffles if we could get the 9-10 out of that. He does. They're still a little bit earlier in this match. That was only a fourth frame open for Espinosa. Padilla shooting with the spare up in the seventh. Trails by only two and rolls pins all over, but doesn't carry out that six. I gotta handhold the camera, so I'm doing the best I can here. Trouble for Castron over there and wide right for Miguel over here. Mel came in at a 128, 138 average today, went plus 70 to be the cut today. So pretty easy patterns, titanium. Titanium is a mid-level pattern. The thing is, these kids are so good, they make medium-level patterns look like cake. They make easy patterns look silly, and they are competitive on hard patterns like we had yesterday. Talented bunch of kids. Nice spare from Espinosa there. Connor up immediately trying to respond. Dead flush for Bryant, and Connor gets the carry over there as well. Three events next weekend, Los Angeles and Chandler for them to choose from.
Tyler says he wants titanium laid out more often. That's where he had his 298 game on at uh, Suncoast last year. Pendergrass looking for the Brooklyn double and gets it. I don't know what pin came over at that six pin. Funny pin action. That's kind of looked like a fish fight. It worked. This guy was desperate to crowbar that in. <laughs> he found a way to make it happen. Oh, Tyler leans that temp in over. Let's see if Espinoza can respond to Pendergrass's double with one year. Cannot get it. That ball high the whole way. And he's been making that, I don't know, body language for the last two games, but he keeps winning these games. With my good sport. Yeah. Oh! It's alright, it's alright, it's alright, let it go, let it go. Let's try. Seven. Connor's giving seven. No problem with the spare for Padilla. Uh, it's only a one pin match. Anybody's game in the ninth and tenth over in scratch. Miguel comes up high. Easy to do with these first time finalists. Usually the misses are high as the lanes continue to break down. The nerves kick in. Wow. An excellent shot from Padilla. He's left a lot of ring tens in the back half of this tournament. And obviously carrying most of them in the front half of this tournament. Tricky little spare for Espinoza. He chopped the last one, but does not chop that one. Well done. Uh, Allo over there has uh, a cartoon on his screen is what he has. Allo has 105 through 135 through 7, old man. So he leads by 10 over there, I can see that much. Way Brooklyn, wow, he almost got a crazy runaway Brooklyn to carry there. Instead he leaves a shaky little 10 over there. Caesar can max at 195. And that's different, a half 10 pin. But he is 10 pin, swung around the top of the 10 pin. That's just a weak 10 where the six lays in the channel. The best he can do now is 197. So spare double nine and Bryant wins. Anything less than that, Padilla can swipe this tournament away. Odd that the top seed has to do the swiping, but that's uh, the case here. <laughs> first things first, cover your corner pins. Make your spares, kids. He does. Nicely done in a pressure situation. Never been in this spot in JBT before. Here's Pendergrass in the eight. Oh, high again, and this time pays the price with an ugly six count. Makeable, though. Triple over there for the man, for the... Tyler, what do we call it? Tyler Titanium Tour. He wants to rename the tour. Double nine to win. There's one. Makeable spare, and that's the way to make what? it. Oh! Wow. So Connor makes the six, seven, ten, but shaves it so narrowly that it misses the nine. Great try. More unusual pin action. Right now, Amar Bryant. Has never been in this situation before. 19 fill to win a count. Castronova chops over there for 2 0, but right here is the shot of the day for Bryant. No, slow the whole way. We'll check back in in a second over there. Castronova finishes that help. 2 0 2? Yeah, 2 0 2. So strike 8 spare, right? No, it's strike 8 1. Okay. Well, it's not a strike, and Tyler Castronova is going to win on titanium. All right, the count here matters a little bit for Brian. He gets it. Oh, no. Meanwhile, Miguel misses a five pin. So Amar finishes up at 187, right, before that stinking cartoon showed up again. Miguel's got to slow down and take a breath here. It's so natural for them to just go mega speed. Taking a breath might really help him after missing that five pin. Go! Uh, Caesar to win, it must double, right? Yes, double and three. Come on! Yeah. Nice first one. Come on, baby! Well, I don't think, unlike his last match, we're going to have a tie because strike two is his tie combination. And <laughs> if that happens, we'll have the uh, all time bowling video on YouTube if that happens. Yes. 
I still can't believe Jennifer Laredo made a Greek church to win the main event and we got it on camera. That is the shot of JVT history on camera. Fendergrass is shooting in the ninth. Right now it's strike to win. Now it's tight. Nope, tight the entire way off his hand. Doesn't get the carry and Amar Bryant is going to be a JBT champion. 187 to 180 whatever is going to be the final over there. Kind of covers his spare. Tough loss for Caesar. Let it start until that moment. Very well contested and there's a brand new person in the winner's circle. Alright, Pendergrass again has to win this match by eight. He's shooting in a, on a, working on a spare in the ninth. He spare strikes for 167 minus that seven for 160. Now the best Espinosa can do is 148, and that is really good news. It is just a 10 pin in this case because it's a winner, right? 148. I think he needs a pin here technically. Well, you know what? He's got. I think that's the pin he needs. So 156. The best Miguel can do is 149 and get seven. I think he needs all three to tie, kids, right? Yep. Well, for an untested cacti who never even made a cut before, he needs all three to tie this match. That is a tall order. Let's see what he can do. Get it, get it. No, not to be. All right, all right. Well, listen, for a kid who hasn't even made the cut before to finish second in a pretty big tournament is, is a lot of positives. But there's a very happy Connor back to my right. Make it anyway. Whoop. Excellent effort from a first time finalist. Fifty more people here today than there was last night. Go figure. That's got to be it. Two first-time winners. That's always awesome on tour. Matt Hunt, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for getting your watch back. We're going to have a lot more fun next week in Phoenix and Los Angeles. See you then, folks.